I want to take you back to my childhood as well, growing up here in Brampton. When we finally moved to Brampton, it was diverse. I mean, not diverse the way we see it today. Um, I was probably uh, one of a couple of Indian kids in the school uh, or in my classroom. Now you know that that's changed quite a bit. Um, but, you know, the, there was always... I can understand, you know, I can relate to the fear of telling people where you're from and um, growing up, I saw a real difference within my own family. Uh, when my father immigrated to Canada in the 70s with my mother, he, I mean, I wasn't born at that time because I was born here in Toronto, so I don't have my own immigrants, immigration story, but I'm a daughter of immigrants. And when he first immigrated here, um, he used to wear a turban back home in India. Uh, underneath that turban is uncut hair. And so when he arrived, you know, he wanted to fit in. He cut his hair. He took off the turban because first and foremost, the most important thing is survival and getting a job and making sure that you can provide for your family. A few years later, I was born. I had a very loving childhood. Um, I grew up, I'm very fortunate, just like Ramona, to have a lot of family, aunts and uncles and cousins around me to support you all along the way. But I saw a shift over the years. I saw a shift in my parents wanting to really embrace their identity again. So near the mid-80s, they really felt that they needed to connect to their culture, their heritage. My father put back that turban on, started taking us to the Gurdwara more often, emphasized that we needed to speak our language of Punjabi at home, because he sort of slowly started to see that we were, our culture and our heritage was slipping away. And 20, 30 years down the road, you know, it would be all gone. So as much as we wanted to fit in, there was also this need to preserve and bring that culture into Canada and make it a part of the fabric that we all belong to. So it was emphasized that we speak Punjabi at home and English only outdoors. And I thank them so much for that today, because now I not only speak English, but I can speak a few other languages. And that is really important in today's day and age. And so I really thank them for taking that step. It was hard. I hated it at the time, but I'm so glad they did it. And over the years, you know, there were other things that a struggle within. And um, I recently gave a statement in the House of Commons that has been circulating, and I'll refer a little bit of where, you know, some of those emotions come from is because when you're growing up here, you want to make your parents proud, like any child does. You want them to feel that you appreciate who they are and all they do for you and where they've come from. But you also just want to have friends and you want to fit in and you want to be the cool kid at school. So along with that is an internal struggle, struggle constantly to do the right thing, but then somehow to be that leader that, you know, everyone accepts you standing up for yourself and you wearing your traditional clothing, which I purposely wore here today. You know, it may be an Indo-Canadian twist to it, but that's who we are today, right? We bring all these cultures and we bring them together. And I think we should appreciate it when we engage and we take part in others' traditions. But some memories that go back are, you know, when I was a young kid, I had uncut hair, so it was very long. Around the time when I was in grade five, I was at a doctor's office um, right here on North Park in Bramalee with my mother, living in Brampton, which was still fairly diverse compared to a lot of places in Canada. And uh, I had snuck downstairs to the pharmacy. My mother had gave, given me a couple of dollars to you know, buy some junk food, like all kids like to do. And so I took the elevator down. It was just a three-story building. And to my surprise, you know, I'd been attacked at school and I got into, you know, play yard fights. I think everyone probably has some of those stories in their past. But I'd never been attacked by an adult ever before. And so imagine a 10-year-old girl standing in an elevator, getting mocked and being called a packy over and over again by some adult women standing behind her. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. But I didn't even know what was going to happen next, so I just kept staring at the elevator buttons in front of me, 
And I thought, okay, elevator door, please open, please open. It's going to open soon, and I'm just going to run out. And so I let them mock me, make fun of me, but I wasn't sure what was coming next. And to my horror, um, they, took out an, they took out a lighter. And uh, they lit that lighter, and they tried to light my hair on fire. Um, so I, I could hear the sound of the lighter behind me, but I didn't know what to do. And so as they tried to char my hair from the bottom and light it on fire, I just stood there in complete panic and shock, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to fight back, especially to adults, right? Been fighting little kids, and that's a whole different story. I've got a lot of fight in me, and uh, I'm pretty tough, but there was a big age difference, and I just... When you, you're never confronted by a circumstance like that before, you really don't know what to do. And so, anyways, luckily, you know, my, hor my hair didn't catch fire completely, but the bottoms were all seared. And I ran to the pharmacy, and they took off. I didn't even get a good look at their faces or anything because I was too scared to look back. And then I told my parents what had happened. And it was kind of interesting at home. At first, they didn't even believe me because they thought, oh, I had long, uncut hair, and maybe I was one of my ways of wanting to fit into Canadian society, and I wanted to cut my hair. So I had somehow, you know, d tried to uh, cut my hair from the bottom, make my hair a little shorter to fit in. And then I explained to them that wasn't the case and that this was, you know, something that somebody had done to me. And they were horrified. They couldn't believe it. But nothing really much came out of that because, you know, you don't want to create trouble. You just move on. You accept that this is the way things are. You toughen your kids up to deal with these occurrences as they come in the future. So, you know, I often heard, you know, you need to fight back. You need to stick up for yourself. And then as my brother came along, my brother is younger than me. He was probably more identifiably uh, Sikh than I was because he had, he wore... Um, well, as a little kid, they don't often wear a turban, but he had uncut hair and wore it as a top knot, the top of his head, a juda. And so he had a lot more schoolyard fights than I ever had. But that affected his you know, grades and uh, his standing at school. And I remember at home, we just told him, you know, you've got to stand up for yourself. It's okay if they, they're pushing you into the girls' bathroom. Uh, you'll, you'll make it through, and you've got to defend yourself. So... When, fast forward to now, you know, these are, these are all things that you kind of just put in your past and you move forward because there's, the majority of the people are good. And the majority of the people out there want to learn about where you're from, your heritage, your religion, your culture. But everyone out there, and even today, I believe, even though that we're so much more multicultural than we used to be, I'm sure every kid out there has an internal struggle of their own trying to figure out where their place is, how much they should reveal their heritage or their culture, and, and, and whatever they want to make of it. Because I'm truly Canadian. I mean, I'm so proud to be a Canadian. I was born in this country, and, you know, but I myself also often hesitated, and even as an adult sometimes, I especially hesitated as a child. I never wanted my parents to go out wearing Indian clothing because I felt, you know, people were going to think that we, we weren't a part of Canada. We weren't Canadian enough if we did that. And even today, you know, I, I try to make many outfit changes, you know, as I go from an event to a, another event. And I want to appreciate someone's culture or heritage if it's, you know, I'm go, attending an event of another culture. But it's funny, you know, at times I'm like, oh, geez, I've, I've got to go to an event where it's going to be predominantly uh, English, you know, Canadian event. And I'm wearing Indian clothing. Should I walk through that door like that? Because inside of me, I still think back to growing up, and I think those thoughts of, well, they're going to think I'm not educated, or they're going to think I didn't, don't speak English well. And the fact is that I speak English, and I speak many other languages. So not everyone can say that about themselves. But the struggle always continues. It never really goes away. And of course, we should, you know, we should dress professionally. I mean, I'm not against that, and I know that your appearance is important because that's how people uh, make their first impression of you. 
Uh, I'm in politics. I know quite a lot about, you know, trying to make a good impression. But it's really important that we really think about the dialogue that we're having today because that re recent video that's been circulating about me, it wasn't something that, you know, I was planning on saying or anything like that. But as I sat in the House of Commons and I kept hearing, it wasn't so much the argument about the issue that was involved in the debate. I understand, you know, the opposition has a role, the government has a role to play, but it was the language that was being used. And it just took me back to being a child and struggling to figure out whether I should be proud of wearing this clothing. And I mean, I never told my parents not to wear it. I always told them to wear it. But that didn't mean internally I wasn't just, you know, having to kind of struggle to keep my head up high, hoping and praying that nobody was going to mock them or mock me afterwards after seeing them. So it brings you back, you know, you have flashbacks back to that time and you think, wow, I keep hearing this reference of costumes over and over and over again. And I understand there's plenty of people that have been coming out and trying to give me the dictionary definition of what a costume is. But what's important is how you use that word in everyday language today. And it's being used to hurt. It's being used to undercut people of a different culture. And so I just encourage everyone to go out and wear whatever you're comfortable in and try different clothing from different cultures as well. You'll, you'll find that somebody was telling me in, in the House of Commons the other day that that could be quite comfortable as well. And to me, I really appreciate it when people do that. Um, and if anyone ever wants to talk about their experiences growing up and their struggle to keep their identity, I can really relate to those issues. Um, I'd love to reach out and talk to you about that. But help your kids, because I know they're probably going through this struggle today as well. And for my son, like Ramona was saying, you know, I'm struggling now to pass on that heritage that my parents were able to pass on to me, because it's another generation removed. So we're slowly starting to actually lose it a little bit, lose the language, lose the traditional um, customs. So I think when people, people dress a certain way, people try to share their culture with you, it's because they're trying their best to share it with you and also hold on to something that's near and dear to them. And um, thank you so much for letting me share with you today. And thank you for letting me be your member of parliament and represent a part of this beautiful city. I really appreciate it so, so very much. Thank you.